Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Ashoka Buildcon Limited Q3 FY22 Earnings Conference Call, hosted by Anand Rathi Shares and Stockbrokers. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchdown phone. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Meet Parikh from Anand Rathi. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Tanvi. On behalf of Andrati uh, Shares and Stock Brokers, I welcome everyone to the Q3 FI22 earnings call for us. From the management side, we have Mr. Sadish Parak, MD, and Mr. Sari, uh, Parish Mehta, the CFO, with us. We will start with the opening remarks from the management regarding the industry, the results, and post which we will open up for an interactive Q&A. Over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Good morning, everyone. We would like to extend a warm welcome to everyone on our earnings conference call for the quarter ended December 31st, 2021. Along with me, I have Mr. Paresh Mehta, our CFO. Let me start with the equity sale of ACL projects. We have successfully completed an asset sale transaction of Ashoka Concessions Limited of five SPVs by entering into a share subscription and share purchase agreement with Galaxy Investments 2 Private Limited, an affiliate entity of KKR. The deal to be completed by September 2022 after receiving required approvals from lenders, NHAI, and other relevant stakeholders and completion of certain condition precedents. The deal transferred the entire share capital of these five projects including repayment of shareholders' loan for an aggregate consideration of 1,337 crores. The total proceeds received will be utilized to facilitate the exit of SBI Macquarie funds from Ashoka Concessions Limited, allowing SBI Macquarie to exit the company fully. Further, the transfer of these five SP will reduce the consolidated project debt of ABL by 3,160 cross. Post this transaction, the company will remain with following major projects in highway portfolio. 74% equity stake in one toll project that is Javra Nayagao in the state of Madhya Pradesh. Four annuity projects which include 50% equity stake in Chennai RR and three fully owned projects, Hungut Talikot, Bhagewadi Swandati, and Kship and fully owned portfolio of 10 ham projects as mentioned earlier we are at an advanced stage of discussion for equity sale of Java Niagara BOT toll and Chennai or our BOT annuity also the ham projects portfolio we are evaluating to exit options like infravit or sell to investors coming to industry updates the rise in addition of National Highway is compared to 13,326 kilometers of road constructed in 2021 and 1,237 kilometers in 1920. In 2021, the construction of roads per day increased to 36 kilometers per day against 28 kilometers in 2019-20. In an effort to boost the logistical capacity of India's road network, under the PM Gati Shakti initiative, the Indian government has stated that the National Highway Network will be expanded by 25,000 kilometers within 22-23. The government is expected to increase pace of highway construction. Existing highways will be made into a bigger, stronger, and new ones to provide connectivity to all economic nodes under PM Gati Shakti initiative. The target national highway expansion of 25,000 kilometers in FY23 will put an impetus on strong project award. The current expansion plan by government is expected to help the faster movement of people and goods. Coming to ham projects, we have received appointment date for Ashoka Betadali Shomoga, that is Tumkur Shomoga Package 4 in the month of October. The total equity requirement of all time ham projects is about 
1,427 crores, of which already 960 crores have been invested as on December 2021. Coming to the order book, as mentioned, we have achieved a robust order inflow of 8,526 crores in current financial year. Some of the key large orders are as follows. We have received an order from MCGN for a sewage treatment plant of o &M with 15 years, and this order is a breakthrough order in sewage treatment for the company. Along with this, we have achieved work orders in Goa on a highway project from MRTH amounting to rupees 687 crores. We have also received LOA from NHI worth rupees 829 crores for construction of six laning from Belgao to Sankeshwar bypass of NH48 in Karnataka on EPC mode. Recently, we were L1 for railway electrification order worth 693 crores. Also, we have received work order of 263 crores from Navi Mumbai Airport. The breakup of 12,250 crore order book as on December 2021 is road projects compromise of 7,633 crores, which is 62% of our total order book. Among the road projects, the ham road projects are to the tune of 2,638 crores, and EPC projects are to the tune of 4,995 crores. Part E&D and other projects account for around 1,902 crores, which is 16% of our total order book. The EPC building segment contributed to 1,905 crores, which is also 16% of our total order book, while railway stood at 729 crores, which is 6% of our total order book. The EPC work and CGD comprises of balance of around 82 crores. The total order book, including the projects received and the project, railway project where we are L1 in current quarter, stand at rupees 14,500 crores. Let me reiterate that our focus remains to build strong EPC businesses in the segments of highway, railways, power, t &D, buildings, and now water treatment. The current order book of rupees 14,500 crores provide us with good visibility of EPC business growth. On asset portfolio front, we have already built 10 HAM projects portfolio. In terms of new projects bidding, a priority will remain for HAM projects and strengthen the HAM project portfolio further. This is all from my side. I would now request Mr. Paresh Mehta to present the financial performance of Q3 FI22. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everyone. The result presentation and press release for the quarter have been uh, have been uploaded on the stock exchange, exchanges and on the company website. I believe uh, you all may have gone through the same. Now I would present the financial results for the quarter ended December 31st, 2021. Starting with the consolidated results, the total income of Q3 FY22 grew by 10.8% year on year to rupees 1,475 crores as compared to rupees 1,331 crores in Q3 FY21. EPITA stood at 433 crores in Q3 FY22 with a margin of 29.4%. Profit after tax is at 389 crores in Q3 FY22. The exceptional items in the consolidated financials is write back of 326 crores on account of remission towards investors in ACL. We have entered into agreement with SBI Macquarie through which we have reduced the obligation to Rs. 1200 crores from Rs. 1526 crores. Now coming to the standalone numbers, the total income of Q3 FY22 stands at Rs. 1133 crores as compared to Rs. 1028 crores in the corresponding quarter last fiscal, registering a growth of 10.2%. EBITDA for the quarter was at 150 crores with EBITDA margin of 13.2%. The company reported loss of 694 crores on Q3 FY22 as we have recognized exceptional item of rupees 796 crores, 769 crores. The exceptional item in standalone financials 
is expense of 769 crores towards impairment of its investments in equity shares, CCDs, and loans given to ACL. This is mainly due to sale of equity of five BOT projects to KKI from aggregate consideration of for an aggregate consideration of 1337 crores and giving exit to Macquarie. During Q3 FY22, BOT division recorded a total collection of 257 crores as against 260 crores in Q3 FY21 and rupees 243 crores in Q2 FY22. Total consolidated debt as on December 31, 2021 is at rupees 6822 crores of which project debt is rupees 5923 crores of which 3166 crores stands for project debt of five projects. NCD is stood at rupees 250 crores at ECA level. The standalone debt is at 649 crores, which comprises of 140 crores of equipment loans and 509 crores of working capital loans. Out of the total consolidated debt of 6822 crores, rupees 6, 3166 crores will be transferred along with the five SPVs of BOT projects. Post the sale of transaction, effective consolidated debt will be at rupees 3656 crores. With this, we now open the floor for question and answers. Thank you. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Vibor Single from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, good morning, sir. Thanks for uh, taking my question. Uh, and congrats on the great execution in this quarter. Uh, so just wanted to uh, uh, confirm on one thing. Uh, I think when we have this call regarding the sale of uh, the five assets to uh, the KKR group entity, uh, we had mentioned that I think we're expecting the write-off to the tune of 500 to 600 crores. Uh, any specific reason that it ended up uh, being uh, significantly higher than what was estimated? Uh, so uh, when we had uh, uh, on the call post the transaction, uh, the amount uh, was uh, not uh, including any uh, uh, provision for exit for the SBI Macri. It was only talking about uh, the projects uh, on an estimated basis on the projects. Uh, of the five uh, BOT projects only. So from that perspective, additional provisioning is on account of uh, uh, the exit to be given to SBM Akuri, which was uh, counted in this quarter. But sir, why would that lead to a, 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 a incremental provision in standalone books? I can understand there could be some provision, but why would it be required in our standalone books? So what happens is the total obligation to be paid to uh, uh, Makuri will depend on uh, the ACL's net worth, uh, which uh, uh, the ACL's realizable value, the balance has to be uh, funded from ABL's holding in ACL. So from that perspective, uh, uh, this provision uh, of a total 770 crores uh, has been provided for uh, in uh, uh, Q3. Uh, probably we can discuss on a one-to-one uh, -on -one basis uh, no, sir. On a one-to-one -one basis also. Exactly, sir. Uh, and this is the uh, total provision, sir. Uh, do we expect any more provision after this or just takes care of the entire transaction requirement? This is uh, the total uh, provision for uh, the valuation of ACL uh, on these five BOT projects. Then we are left with uh, one uh, project that is Jara Naiga, which will typically fetch more value than its book. And also then there are the HAM projects, which are at book almost. So we do not expect any more uh, write-offs maybe going forward sure. either if we were to sell Jawara Naga or Chennai or other acquisitions. Nothing very significant. Sure. Uh, got it, sir. Got it. Uh, sir, in terms of the order book, if I could uh, basically uh, uh, get as a piece to uh, maybe comment, sir, I think we've had very strong order inflow. But even then, I think, uh, sir, uh, our order book right now, which is around 12,000 crores and maybe 14,000 crores, including the L1, uh, we uh, basically are looking at an order book which is slightly on the softer side of more like two and a half, two point eight 2.8 times book to save. So are we looking at basically uh, 
uh, aggressively bidding for more kind of ham projects i think it's been sometimes we won some ham projects uh, one is on that front and uh, second is i just wanted to check again on uh, the fact that uh, recently uh, uh, the uh, mega projects of ganga express way were awarded uh, uh, to irb nagani group uh, if it works for us would we be open to uh, working for them as a subcontractor given the mammoth size of the projects that they are Yeah, so see, our focus will always remain on highways, and uh, budget also shows very optimistic uh, aggression by government to build highways. This will come on EPC as well as uh, BOT mode. Recently, also we have one EPC, two highways, one in Goa and another in uh, Karnataka. So our participation is going to be there in all these highways, and uh, the projects which are won by major players like adani and all uh, we are also taking interest in participating and trying to get epc part of this portion so we are open to such uh, offers in the market got it got it sir so this last connected question uh, uh, we recently won this uh, project on bot basis in the sewage treatment plant uh, i think we've been testing those waters with earlier with cgd and now with the uh, sewage treatment uh are we will we be looking for similar kind of more projects you know bot basis i thought that we were basically looking more like either ham projects or more epc projects only but uh, if similar kind of projects let's say come in sewage treatment cgd or water or mining are we open to bidding for these kind of projects on bot basis so let me clarify this is a pure epc project with operation maintenance only that to paid operation maintenance for 15 years so this is not a bot project and uh, your question of whether we will be open to bidding uh, any of these kind of projects it will all depend upon structures availability of finance if it is available and our role is to be a major epc contractor then definitely will be entering in there sure sir got it uh, thank you so much for taking my questions and wish you all the best thank you, thank you. A reminder to participants: If you have any questions, please enter star and one. The next question is from the line of B Vijay from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, so, are we interested in uh, bidding for uh, developing solar projects? Because I saw uh, our name in one of the recent uh, solar bids. And if so, you know why are we uh, uh, bidding for being a developer on the solar side? Uh, we are not uh, trying to be a developer in solar side what we have done is we have been participating for epc part of solar projects okay uh, because i remember seeing ashoka's name in uh, uh, one of the hybrid uh, solar com storage uh, uh, bids recently uh, that is as a developer right if i'm not wrong so there are arrangements where you know, finance is made available and we have to play our epc part in most of these projects so there are so structures, there are structures available where we actually pay a epc part and not the investment part sure so the so idea is mean... to remain as uh, more of a epc player than a developer Sure. So the idea behind this bid was someone else will bring in the investment. Right. So who would that be? Absolutely. Absolutely. Who would that be, sir? Ah, uh, we cannot disclose. There are very strategic uh, names behind this. So, okay. Uh, yeah. But and we'll continue to bid. We are not able to disclose. Yeah. Okay. And we'll continue to bid for such projects in the future. Uh, yeah. If if EPC, see EPC is our strength and. Uh, definitely we would like to encash that okay so uh, even on the uh, solar epc side uh, uh, you know we we are building our capabilities because i don't think we have solar uh, projects executed in the past now we are already executing a solar project for ntpc on epc basis so already we have experience right. now executing right. solar yes correct you are right sure okay that's it from my side thank you participants if you have any questions please enter star and 1 
The next question is from the line of Mohit from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. And congratulations on excellent quarter, especially on the order inflow. So uh, my first question is, uh, I think I received a pointed date for all the projects and I and I assume that the uh, the work on the Palgat to Pass to Pass has also started. How do you expect the FI23 to pan out in Q4? Uh, can we expect in FI23 uh, uh, 5, 5,000 crore kind of, you know, uh, the top line? Yeah, so let me clarify on pointed dates. Uh, Panagar Palshit, we have still not received appointed date, uh, but we expect that to receive in this Q4. And other projects where we are L1, but we are not, uh, or we have got LOA also, but appointed date are yet to be declared, like Mopa uh, Highway at uh, Mopa Airport Highway at Goa, we still not received appointed date. Sankeshwar, we have got LOA, but we are yet to receive appointed date. So all this we will receive either in Q4 or Q1 of next year. And definitely these all orders will pick up uh, as we go along in Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. So next year we see uh, good growth looking at the order book available in hand and picking up of the projects. Can you expect to perhaps in growth over, over FI to 2022? I think we can easily uh, target around 25 to 30 percent for 20 to 23. Yeah. Secondly, sir, uh, yeah, I think uh, we are 25 advanced. 25 to 30 percent in next year. Yeah. Understood, sir. Sir, I think we we were advanced stages to uh, to to complete this Zara Nagar and Chennai or or Can you expect this in Q4? And uh, the related question is, what will you do with the the the, the receipt from Jaron Argon? You know, uh, will this be used to reduce the standalone debt? Yeah. So um, <clears throat> Jaron Argon and Chennai we do and we do target to get these deals uh, signed out before uh, 31st March. So that is what is our focus. Um, definitely, what cash will come in uh, will come in it. Uh, AB level somewhere around uh, in the Q2, probably Q2 of uh, next year. Um, at that uh, moment, uh, definitely a debt reduction would be one of the targets at the standalone level. Uh, and uh, uh, depending on sector's availability and the new contracts being available, we may decide uh, allocation of the uh, capital either for debt or for investors, depending on how uh, the execution pans out. Uh, last year is a water sewage order which you received from MCGM of 10.5 billion. I think the order which you mentioned in the in the presentation is uh, around 6 billion. So uh, should I assume that 4 billion is for O&M for 15 years, or is it or is it in JV and some somebody else has to do the the balance balance work? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a joint venture. So we have captured in our uh, uh, presentation only our portion of uh, the execution because that's the EPC. The work is of 1,046 uh, crores, uh, which we have uh, we, in, in, the, in joint venture. So that's what we have declared in the stock exchange. It's a joint venture with another party. Understood, sir. Thank you and all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Parikshit Kanwal from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Congratulations on a decent quarter. My first question is on the bid pipeline. So if you can highlight uh, the bid pipeline now segment-wise and uh, how much of the bids uh, have we submitted which is yet to be opened? Yeah, bid pipeline, as we explained, uh, NHI is aggressive on putting up a lot of bids and we are participating in most of the HAM and EPC projects. So... Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, could you yeah, just repeat what exactly you... So I was asking, uh, if you can give us uh, segment-wise, like buildings, TND, railways, uh, uh, highways, so what kind of ordering or bid pipeline uh, is there for the fourth quarter? And uh, also if you can highlight how, many, how much of bids we have already submitted, which is yet to be opened. 
so bid submitted and to be opened there are a few bids of course uh, which are yet to be opened uh, around uh, 9000 crores bids are there which are yet to be opened okay uh, these are basically into highway sectors and what about railways in any other segment sir or uh, railway there are no significant bid which are yet to be opened okay Okay. Uh, so the question is on margin. So uh, you have a spare, you are guided for 25 to 30 percent in standalone EPC revenue growth for next year. So for next year, uh, given the commodity headwinds and uh, some of the other peers reporting drop in margins, so how do you see the margins, the beta margins for the next year? If you can give some guidance there. I think margins will be able to maintain because uh, we also are taking into consideration while bidding the. commodity prices variation which is really really affecting the sector so these are part of our bid inputs and most of the bids have uh, price variation clauses the very few mm -hmm. uh, which are like fixed price contracts so what is the total fixed price contracts uh, uh, percentage in our order book and is it safe to assume that next year you can do 12 to 13 percent EBITDA margin in the road projects uh, most of the projects uh, you may call ham or you may call uh, the epc contracts most of the projects have uh, uh, escalation clauses other projects most of them are uh, in the fixed price nature okay and the so next year with the margin could be like in range of the 12 13% only more like 11 to 12% it could be in the range of 11 to 12% that's what we have 11 and a half is what this Uh, nine months is throwing up, and probably that would be range which will be maintained for 22, 23. Okay. So yes, lastly, if you can tell who is the joint venture partner in the MCGM. So I mean, uh, just wanted to understand: uh, is it more for technical scoring? That's it. That's why we partnered with them, or uh, so what's the reason for doing it in JV? So you can just highlight. Yes. For the MCGM? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is basically from qualification perspective. Certain requirements are there, so we need and also being experience. Or oh, this is a new segment for us. So the JV partner brings in the experience and also the qualification. And who is the JV partner here? I have Goldwana Engineers as the JV partner who have been doing sewage treatment plants since long. Goldwana Engineers. Yeah. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ranjit from Mahindra Manual Life Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, good morning, uh, sir. If you can uh, throw some more uh, clarity regarding the tea infusion, excluding the uh, PAM portion in the hybrid annuities that will be required. Hello. Yes, sir. You are audible. Uh, One thing, one thing. Sorry, I was on mute. I'm so sorry. Uh, so the equity infusion for the uh, balance ham projects uh, in the coming uh, 21, 22, and 22, 23, wherein most of the ham projects, all the ham projects will be funded for equity, other than PIN, would be uh, 145 crores for this year balance in the next one and a half month, and 139 crores for 22, 23. So total investment uh, yet to be done in these ham projects is 284 crores. so maybe some of the equity for 21 22 may get spilled over for 22 23 depending on uh, execution and requirement of uh, the project okay and uh, what's the update on this uh, maldives uh, social housing project so on this project uh, uh, the uh, the government maldives government is in the process of tying up debt with exim we we'll have to wait till then unless uh, i mean the, if they are successful in tying up then this contract will continue okay uh, and any more large orders in the international geographies we are looking at yeah we have been we have been participating in international geography so bangladesh we are l1 for a 500 crore job okay 
ओके सर थैंक्स एंड ऑल द बेस्ट थैंक यू थैंक यू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम द लाइन ऑफ सुप्रदीप मित्रा फ्रॉम जे एम फाइनेंशियल प्लीज गो है Good afternoon, uh, sir. So uh, I think you've already given a guidance of about 25 to 30 percent growth in sales. I'm sorry, I may have missed some of the details. So just reiterating here that are we looking at this kind of a growth for both FY23 and 24? Yeah, with current order book, I'm looking at the government focus on IV sector. Uh, we feel we should be comfortably able to grow by 25 to 30 percent for both years. Understood. and any target order inflow that you have in mind for fy2324 yeah like you know 9000 crores is yet to be opened that is all highway sector uh, that is where we are uh, quite optimistic of getting something and also some portion in ganga expressway uh, which could be an epc part for us understood so uh, what i was basically trying to understand is is there any uh, you know overall targeted order inflow or annual order inflow number that you have in mind you know going that annually you would like like to reach a, a targeted order inflow for certain number so like this year we have already done around 8500 so 8000 to 10000 should be like we should be able to cross 10000 this year and then next year maybe even more Understood. Twelve thousand. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, now, and now the focus of gone uh, major highways like expressways, which really uh, are of good size and they give good fast turnover also. Okay. So looking at the spending of the government, we feel uh, coming two three years will be a very good growth in highway sector. Okay. Uh, and and lastly with regard to the uh, solar epc project that we are doing for ntpc uh, i think in the last call you mentioned that the modules for the same were still to be procured is the status still the same or have you already procured the modules status is still the same and we are discussing with the ntpc to how to resolve this uh, ordering issue or we'll take extension from them yeah so is there any a possible penalty that could come up in this particular project and and what is the last uh, let's say quarter by which you would have to you know procure the modules to uh, you know finish it on de- by deadline so basically we are in discussion with the authorities and till date there is no such indication and uh, because this is a complete problem for all the entire sector for all the projects so this is being discussed at policy level to resolve this issue okay so your best guess would be that the deadlines would get extended on this one yeah definitely and balance of work is absolutely as per targeted timelines uh, so all balance epc is being done except for the module everything is being kept ready and this is very well understood by the authorities also because for them it's not a So they have a large portfolio and they understand it across the sector understood understood thank you that's it from my side all right thank you participants if you wish to ask a question please enter star and one the next question is from the line of bipur singhal from philip capital please go ahead uh yeah uh, thank you sir thanks for your the opportunity again uh so j- just uh, i think i missed out on the guidance front Uh, you mentioned 25 to 30 percent kind of a growth in FY 23, but what on FY 22? Uh, more like a 20. Uh, I mean, uh, what is the guidance for FY 22 in terms of revenues? 22, we would cross around 15 to 20 percent uh, is what we still feel we will be able to achieve. Okay. Uh, got it, sir. Uh, also, sir, just a small bookkeeping question. Uh, our debt at the standalone level. appears to have gone up this quarter uh, from i think at the standalone the working capital that we're talking of so any specific reason on that and if you could just maybe tie it up with how is the payment cycle looking how are the payments from government various government bodies uh, are looking at yeah so basically uh, no, there are uh, um, realization which are hap- which are happening in q3 which will take care of the in- uh, slightly higher debt inflated debt uh, on the working capital It's more of a uh, uh, catching up with the billing uh, 
payments. More of a timing issue. Yeah. Got it. And so the payment cycle from NHI from other warrant bodies are they on track or uh, spe any specific delays that you might want to flag off? No, nothing. Uh, nothing very uh, sig uh, significant on NHI payments once they are approved. So that way, it's comfortable. Okay, and the power TND projects in Bihar and Jharkhand, other states are also on time, sir. Yeah, we have received, in fact, a, a few collections which were pending for last in this quarter, and definitely some payments are uh, in due course, and they'll come in. There are retention payments which are uh, which will uh, be uh, which will come in when they are due. So there are still some time to go for the retention. Got it. So, but there's nothing uh, that is out of the ordinary that is being delayed. There is one state, Jharkhand, where there is a bit delay, but then that we will we are following up and keenly. Got it, sir. Got it. Uh, right. Uh, so, just one last question from my side. Uh, uh, basically, now that we have managed to basically close this deal with the KKR Group, and as you mentioned, that we will also be should be able to wrap up the Jaura Nagao and the Chennai R project by March. Uh, that gives us a, a good amount of, let's say. Uh, uh, headrooms, uh, headroom in terms of our bidding ability. So, uh, could we see more ham projects going forward? And could we also look at some of the BOT projects as we had bid for uh, the uh, some of the NHI projects in West Bengal? Are we also would we be looking at bidding for BOT projects also, or is it going to be the same waterfall that we have chosen before of EPC ham and BOT? So basically, it will be more of EPC and ham. Okay. Uh, very selectively, where we have some structured arrangements for investments and all, we will participate in BOT where investments are taken care of by the investors. Right, sir. And the BOT would be, uh, depending on the, let's say if, if I'm talking about BOT roads, would that be in JV with somebody or would that we will want to go alone? Or would that also depend on? Yeah, yeah, it's project to project completely. Project to project. Sure. Uh, great, sir. Thank you so much for taking all my questions and uh, wish you all the best again. One clarification. The West yes, Bengal sir. project is not a BOT for us. It's an EPC for us. It's a BOT for Adani projects. Right, sir. But I think uh, last year we had bid for uh, a couple of uh, projects from BOT, which we were not able to win. I was talking about our overall strategy of bidding for BOT projects. Right. Got it, sir. Right. West Bengal is EPC. Yeah, got it. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jitain Roshi from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, sir, I have, uh, can you give me the revenue breakup se segment-wise, sir, for the quarter or nine months? Yeah. So, uh, road uh, total revenue was 898 uh, crores for the quarter. Power was uh, 49 crores. Uh, railway was 70 crores, PGD uh, and smart infra was 37 crores. Okay, so road, can you repeat the road sector again, sir? Uh, 898 crores. Thank you. Okay, so eight, road 898 uh, and RMC uh, 48 crores. Uh, yeah. Yeah, please go ahead. RMC 48 crores, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, power 49, railway 70, CDD and Samad City 37, RMC 48 and road 898, right, sir? Okay. And, sir, uh, can you give me a few bookkeeping uh, numbers, like debtors, uh, uh, creditors, uh, mobilization advance, unbuilt revenue retention, and inventory as on December? So, uh, total debtors uh, is in the range of uh, 1,094 uh, crores. Uh, unbilled revenue is 1,071 crores. That's the reason uh, this, as we said, uh, there is a slight uh, jump in the working capital requirement. Um, advance is around 360 crores uh, to be recovered. So this is on the data uh, side. And on the creditor side, 33 in crores is what is outstanding. Yeah. In inventory, sir. Inventory and retention money. Inventory is small, 165 crores. And retention also three and uh, five hundred crores. Or two, uh, retention is around two hundred and nine crores. So this is inclusive in the debtors. One thousand nine hundred forty. Retention includes in debtors, right? Right. So, sir, this. Uh, sorry, sir. Yeah. 
Got it, sir. So this debt level which has gone up. So now obviously our revenue mix is changing going forward uh, because uh, the sh- the share of other segments is going up. So do we see this debt levels to remain elevated because the payment cycles in other segment is always like uh, three to four months, while in road it has been faster. So uh, this will be the uh, consistent phenomenon of working capital levels remaining elevated and debt levels at this level. Uh, or you are expecting the debt level to come down by March. And what is your view, sir? So uh, maybe 50% of the impact of grow, uh, uh, debt level being higher is a mismatch in the payment of road sector. Uh-huh. Once that is uh, once um, which is being taken care in Q3. So then from that perspective, uh, the impact uh, on the work capital requirement and the debt level would increase marginally because of the other sectors, uh, which will have uh, increased working capital by approximately 100, 120, 50 crores. Mm-hmm. So we can see debt levels of 650 to 700 crores by March end. It will not change significantly, what I see. I didn't, didn't get you. What was that? Sir, the current standalone debt is of 650 crores, so we can expect the same number. It will not change. No, the because the road sector uh, mismatch will get resolved. So then it should okay. be in the range of 500 odd crores. Okay, 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 500 crores, right. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and the, obviously you've given the uh, order inflow guidance for this year, we are targeting 10,000 crores. So we are expecting 1500 crore more order inflows from the road sector. Is my understanding correct, sir? Right, right. And sir, uh, now uh, what kind of revenue uh, inflow means uh, going forward? You have guided for twelve thousand crore of inflows next year. So, what kind of mix do we see in this, like from the roads and the non-road segments, sir? So basically, we expect seventy-five to eighty percent again roads, and twenty to twenty-five percent other sectors. What us? Okay. Okay. Uh, and sir, uh, are we going to participate in the, any TOT projects of an, uh, any TOT bid? Because uh, we, as you said correctly, yeah, you might go selectively for BOT projects that we saw in Ganga Expressway. So any TOT bundles or any future uh, NHI TOT bundles we would like to participate in? No, as of now, we are not uh, analyzing anything. And sir, last question on my from my side. Capex uh, for nine months and for uh, full year guidance and next year capex guidance and the current bank limits, fund based non fund and utilization levels, sir. So uh, the capex uh, for uh, nine months was very significant, but by end of this quarter we'll have a capex around fifty to sixty crores for uh, okay. on machinery side and uh, machinery and uh, what do you call it. Uh, um, I was and other things, and uh, on the uh, as I said, uh, debt utilization we've already given 650 crores uh, as of 648 crores, and uh, BG uh, bank guarantee limits utilized in the range of around 2000 uh, uh, 600 crores. So okay. 2600 utilized. What is the total total limit, sir? 3600, which will get enhanced by another 7 800 in the coming month. We got sanctions. Okay. Good and working through. capital, we have used almost 500 crore plus. So our, our limit is what, 1,000 crore in working capital? No, so this is uh, in two forms. Uh, our uh, basically uh, working capital loan is 350 crores. We have dipped into uh, based on our MBPS uh, and our uh, uh, we have dipped into uh, working capital demand loans with uh, bankers at a very fine rate in the range of 4.25. So that's kept the interest rate also lower, but this will be liquidated over a period of time as this realizations which will come from the mismatch in the road sector. So that will go down. So otherwise, our working capital uh, limit for uh, non fund base is 350 crores. Okay. Since the capex guidance for next year, like this year you said 50, 60 crore total capex, next year would be how much? Like same number or we can expect more? Sir? So depending on the mix of projects which we win, uh, so in the road sector and others, I think so we'll continue to. We uh, will probably have a total uh, capex of around uh, uh, 80 to 100 crores. And sir, any refinancing opportunity in the HAM project? So, what is the refinancing rate we are getting now? Or uh, for the new HAM projects, what are the financial closure rates we are getting now, sir, on the banks? 
So uh, we uh, the completed road project. We have two uh, uh, completed, completed yes. and one yet to re, uh, one completed, but NET yet to come. Uh, where we have uh, uh, opportunity for refinancing. These these are due in May 21 for reset. So from on that date we'll do a refinancing with the probably with the existing financing. So this would be in the range of. Six point uh, in today's rates uh, compared to today's uh, rates, range of six point nine uh, to seven point one. Uh, where we uh, to, today's financing rate is on seven point nine, so that will be arbitrage of approximately uh, one percent. That's it from my side, sir. Thank you and all the best, sir. Thank you. The next question is from of Parvez Akhtar Kazi from Edelweiss Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good afternoon, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, so, uh, my question is, what is the equity that we had infused uh, uh, in our ham project this quarter? In this quarter, there was a uh, not a significant uh, infusion, around only 14 crores. But post that, uh, uh, in Q4, we have already invested 55 crores, 40, uh, uh, which includes major in the TS4. Uh, uh, that is better, better Delhi Shimoga. Okay. Uh, have we received the appointed date for the Banur Karat project? No, we have not yet received. Okay. So, is that the only the post election we will get this year? Okay. Uh, so, of the 12,000 odd crores order book that was there at the end of December, is that the only project where appointed date is uh, still? Pending or are there any other projects as well? No, that is the only project where appointed date is pending, and uh, the others which we have received in Q4, that the appointed dates are pending, which I mentioned. Yeah. This Mopai Airport and uh, Belgaus and Kishwar. Uh, thanks. That's it from my side. And, okay. and of course, Panagar Palsit, which we are expecting now. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Varun Murthy, individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for the opportunity. I had a couple of questions. Just wanted to know what is the debt position uh, on the HAM portfolio as of date, the HAM portfolio under uh, ACL, and also on the two projects uh, that you said are at advanced stage, basically. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Mr. Parak, Mr. Mehta? We are not able to hear you. Sorry, I was on mute again. Uh, what is the uh, question again? Can you just get back? Yeah, I just wanted to know what is the debt position on the 10 HAM projects uh, you have uh, as of December and also the external debt on the two projects that you said uh, we are in advanced stages of selling. So, um, uh, the date on the all the hand project as of date is approximately 2000 uh, odd crores and uh, which uh, on the on the two uh, assets one second i'll just get you uh, give me a minute i'll just uh, get back maybe you can come uh, uh, yeah so one one other question that i had uh, was uh, you mentioned in your opening comments and also in your investor presentation around the monetization of the ham project so just wanted to check given that most of these projects are still like in under construction stage like is this like a viable monetization near term or like is this something that we are looking out say say one two years down the line basically this should be uh, in a range of around uh, not more than uh, one year's time for the completed project. Okay, and is there any early thought process around like the monetization? Because I'm assuming even in an invert, you would like end up owning most of the stake. So, uh, like, would the eventual decision be driven by what is the value you are getting, or like, uh, do you want to like, uh, do you have a preference to continue ownership of these assets for the maintenance work, etc.? So. Uh, Transferring it to an invit probably will not entail uh, substantial uh, uh, stake on our side, maybe in the range of uh, 
25 to 30 on a revalued basis, uh, not more. Uh, so some cash will definitely uh, be monetized. Uh, on, definitely, uh, if we are the sponsors, uh, we will definitely continue to maintain the assets and uh, uh, have revenue from that side. Okay, thank you. And uh, coming back on the uh, debt on uh, the two projects which are completed, uh, on the Kharal Lodhiana, the debt is around 568 crores and on Ranas Karam project, it is 391 crores. Total debt is around 2,200 okay. uh, 2000, total debt is 2,200 crores as of December. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Shah from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Sir, so just uh, uh, in this question was asked in a slightly different way earlier, but in this total 1337 crores of equity that we are investing in the HAM uh, projects, what is the uh, PIM component and what is the actual uh, investment that uh, that we will end up making in everything put together? Uh, so, uh, uh, on the uh, 1337 crores which is envisaged the pin contribution would be around 386 uh, crores okay and the balance is the cash flow invested from your balance sheet yeah share uh, share capital or cause equity correct sure and sir when when you are you know evaluating or you are talking to an investor in terms of the monetization the potential of these uh, projects the benchmark would be uh, 1337 crores of equity invested, right? I mean, at a fully invested stage, obviously. Uh, because at the end of the day, the PIM which has got invested in the assets is, is actually the cap equity capital, which otherwise you could have kind of captured it elsewhere in your EPC, right? I mean, am I, am I getting it right? Yeah, so finally, end of the day, uh, when the valuations will be arrived at, it will be based on uh, the future cash flows. So it will represent right. both the uh, share capital and the PIM. Right. So basically you retaining the uh, entire PIM component in the asset, that mm. leaves more value on the table in the assets. Is That's the point I'm trying to arrive at. Yeah. Good. yeah. Okay. Right. And sir, uh, uh, directionally on the on the margin component, you know, we have uh, we have been uh, diversifying, and we have indicated our intention to to keep getting more and more diversified. So on an ongoing basis, uh, what is the kind of margin trajectory one should expect? Should we be more in the range of uh, like a 10, 11 percent, 11, 12 percent, you know, let's a medium term perspective? This will be generally in the range of 10 to 12 percent. The roads will be slightly higher because that's a high expertise field of ours. Uh, projects may have a lower margin based on competition or as a new entry. So the range would be in the range of 10, 12. All the mix probably would be in the range of 11.25 to 12 percent. Okay, and uh, sir, also on the uh, on the MCGM project that we have got. So uh, you know, if you can uh, talk on. What what is going to be our role? What is going to be our share uh, of the of the EPC and and uh, you know how do we, how does it help us in the future? What is our whole thought process behind uh, that project? See, basically this is all uh, civil treatment plants, and uh, entire civil works are being done by us. So it's all 65 35 sharing in a JV ratio, and this also gives us a good amount of qualification going ahead bidding in these kind of projects. So going ahead, sir, you, you are, are you are we indicating that we are looking at sewage treatment or maybe desalination? I mean, is that the area that we are trying to build up the qualifications for? Yeah, as a strategy, you see, seventy percent would always remain seventy to eighty percent is Voda and highways, and twenty percent we are trying to enter into EPC segment of buildings, sewage treatment, uh, water treatment, and railways. Right. So sure, and require similar kind of skill set which we already have. They all have a lot of civil portion in them. Like railways are civil as well as electrification and telecommunication, which we are already doing. Sewage has this, and treatment part is also not 
like very difficult to pick up and execute so who are our partners in this because we said we got it in a consortium gunwana engineers is our gb partner in this and they have been doing okay. this treatment plants uh, since more than 3 decades now sure and so lastly uh, can we just uh, talk about your thoughts on the cgd business going forward because in the recently concluded bids we haven't sort of got anything so what is your whole thought process on on that business going forward so here we have three gas it is with us approximately with a project cost of around 850 crores and uh, all the three gas are uh, operational and they have started uh, revenues um, we have an investor morgan stanley also in the joint venture so they definitely will be looking out for an exit in a year or two's time with that is generally their horizon of 4 to 5 years so from that perspective uh, um, this uh, uh, set of projects could be uh, available, uh, could be taken up uh, uh, for monetizing too <coughs> okay present uh, because in view of most of the gas have already been uh, bid out and allotted uh the next round of bidding may take a lot of time because most of it is almost covered now most of it yeah. so basically sir is it safe to say we are looking at an exit from this business because you said the partner also wants to exit and uh, if you're but looking at monetizing this yeah there is one possibility we don't mind running it but a uh, good possibility that in case uh the uh, existing partner also wants to exit it could make sense if we get a good valuation okay and there is no uh, guaranteed irr obligation etc to the morgan stanley investment right no okay okay and how, just last thing sorry how much have they invested so far so at present we have invested approximately 140 crores okay and your investment is also matching amount right around 150 or so No, no, no. Put put together. Okay. 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 Put together. Sorry, it's one forty, and is it equally split between them, between you and Macquarie? Uh, sorry, Morgan. Fifty one forty nine. Fifty one forty nine. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jitin Roshi from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Okay. Sir, thank you for taking my question. Sir, one last question from my side is: What is the outstanding equity in Jawra Nagar, including uh, sub debt and uh, loss funding, if any, and in China, and the out- outstanding debt balance as on uh, December, sir? So, on Jawra Nagar, the the basic equity is two eighty seven crores, which is uh, intact, and there is no funding. Uh, Additional funding on the projects. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, the Jawra Nagar was total investment of is two eighty seven crores, right? Including sub debt, sub, uh, sub debt, and uh, and uh, actual equity, right, sir? Yeah. yeah. There is no sub debt. Pure equity of two eighty seven crores. Pure equity. Okay. And sir, what about Chennai Aurora? Chennai Aurora one eighty nine crores is the pure equity, and uh, there is a debt of around two hundred. Uh, Forty crores. Two forty crores is the sub debt. Yeah. So, sir, this two eighty seven crore Jawra Nagar is hundred percent level or it is seventy four percent R stake, sir? This is hundred percent. And Chennai are also hundred percent, right, sir? Yeah, that is also hundred percent. But the debt which we are talking about has been funded by ABL. Hmm. Interest, non interest bearing, sir. No interest bearing. Non interest bearing. And sir, what is the outstanding uh, gross debt? It is interest bearing. Sorry, I mean, okay, just two forty crore is uh, interest bearing. So like around ten, twelve percent kind of. Okay. Yeah, uh, actually larger. Yeah. <clears throat> And sir, what is the gross outstanding borrowings in both the projects as on December? On both the projects, uh, on uh, uh, Jawra Nagar, it's approximately one eighty seven crores. And on uh, Chennai Aurora, it's approximately eight hundred fifty crores. But it's excluding that two forty crore, right, sir? No, this is external debt which I am talking of. Term loan from lenders. These okay. both numbers of one eight seven and uh, hmm. uh, hmm. eight fifty crore. These are uh, term lenders money. Okay. 
So basically, sir, if you have go through the transaction, probably just two forty crore of loan will come back to you, and any additional equity or and above what you earn, that will come back to you, right? According to your share. So this fifty percent partnering chain, or what is the status like uh, GV? Are like we were supposed to, uh, uh, you know, uh, the the stake of ours was supposed to go back to one hundred percent. So the company was in NCIT. So any any update on that, sir? The talks are on. Okay, sir. Right. Okay, thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. That was the last question. As there are no further questions, I will now hand over to management for closing comments. We thank all the investors of for joining on this call. Uh, we would uh, be happy to take any other queries. Uh, uh, I, we are available. Uh, our stellar uh, relations are also available for queries. Uh, That's all from our side. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. On behalf of Anand Rati Shares and Stock Brokers, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.